Chapter 13, One Crazy Summer, Everyone Knows the King of the Sea. I didn't care what Cecile called her new self or how much dust she blew off paths with her poems. She was Cecile Johnson to me, and I didn't appreciate her so-called new self or her new name. A name is important. It isn't something you drop in the litter box basket or on the ground. Your name is how people know you. The very mention of your name makes a picture spring to mind. Whether it's a picture of class clashing fists or a mighty mountain that can't be knocked down. Your name is who you are and how you're known even when you do something great or something dumb. Cecile had no trouble dreaming up names for us. I'll bet ours were names she meant for us to keep and not throw away when we decided we had enough of our old selves. According to Uncle Darnell and Big Ma, she had a name ready for Fern. But Papa said no more of those made-up different names. So Cecile gave Fern some of her milk, put her in her crib, stood over for her for a while, and was gone. Although no one thinks I can, I remember a time when smoke filled the house. Not coughing smoke, but smoke from a woman's smooth voice singing with piano, bass, and drums. Altogether, these sounds made smoke. Uncle Darnell would say, you can't remember that. You were two, three, maybe. But I do. I still see, hear, and feel bits and flashes. The sounds of musical smoke. My head on Cecile's big belly. Uncle Darnell said the Vaughn in Veneta came from the Vaughn in the singer Sarah Vaughn's name. And when Uncle played the album Cecile had left behind, the ones with piano, bass, drums, and a smooth voice Sarah Vaughn in my mind, smoke still filled the house. Cecile could go changing her name at the sight of rain, but I, wasn't, I was going to stay Delphine, even after I learned the truth about my name. Even that it wasn't enough to make me drop, even that wasn't enough to make me drop my name. My name was the one thing I didn't have to share with another soul in my school. In my last class, three Debras, two Lindas, two Jameses, three Michaels, and two Moniques shared their names. There was also one Anthony whose mama could spell and one Antony whose mama couldn't. It was no secret that they too shared a name. If you hollered Anthony, Antony, or Aunt, both boys' heads turned. My name was my own, and I couldn't imagine that anyone else in all of Brooklyn, in all of Brooklyn, no matter where we went, Coney Island, Prospect Park, or Shiloh Baptist Church, there was only one Delphine. I never thought about what Delphine meant, or if it had a meaning at all. It was just my name. Delphine had a groan sound like it was waiting for me to slide into it, like a grown woman slides into a mink coat or clips on ruby earrings. I figured since Cecile didn't have a mink coat or ruby earrings to give me when I grew up, she had dream dreamed up a name that I would grow into. It was the one thing Cecile got right. There was no slice or drop of it that had I had to share with my sisters. And then that stupid show had to come on television. The one about the dolphin that saves everyone's lives and corrals the bad guys until the sheriff arrives. At recess or on the bus, especially on Wednesdays, the day after the TV show came on, the boys would all sing, they call him Flipper, Flipper, faster than lightning, or something like that. Then they start pushing at me to speak in dolphin. Ellis Carter had been the chief flipper singer and whistler on one particular Wednesday. I'd beaten him up real good. I made sure it was as unforgettable a beating as I could give him, so it would burn into the minds of all the other flipper singers and whistlers. When I got home from school, my knuckles still sore from Ellis Carter's jaw, I told Vanetta and Fern to change their clothes, hang them up neatly. That would save me from ironing them that night. I would told them to start their homework, and I'd be back in exactly 20 minutes to help them if they needed it. I told Big Ma that I had to get a book from the library, and I would be right back. 
Then I marched to that library to find out for myself. I had gone straight to the biggest dictionary in the reference section. This dictionary was so huge, you needed both hands to manage turning the pages and making the book stay put. Good old Miriam Webster. I trusted Miriam because I thought instead of having children she didn't want, she wrote the dictionary. She didn't have anything else better to do. Probably didn't have sisters or brothers to see after, which was why she knew every word in the world. Big Mom would have said Miriam might as well be useful. I turned to the back section, past the Z words, past the phases of the moon and the metric system, finally to the given names. I flipped a few pages to get to the female D names. I turned and thumbed past. Daisy, Daphne, Deanna, Deborah, Della, Dolores. And there it was. The name that I had been sure Cecile had dreamed up while she stared out the window as musical smoke blew through our house. There it was, in a book, broken down into two syllables, spelled exactly the same. There it was, my name, Delphine. My nostrils had flared, my breathing raced, my heart pounded, not only in my chest, but throughout my body. This changed everything. My mother hadn't reached into her poetic soul and dropped me up a name. My mother had given me a name that already was, which means she hadn't given me a thing, not one thing. How could this be when a woman's deep, smoky voice planted Veneta's name in Cecile's mind? How could this be when Cecile dreamed up a name for Fern so marvelous that the idea of not being able to give it caused her to up and leave us? I didn't need to ask my, any further. The proof was right there. I shared my name with some other Delphine, and she, just like I, according to Miss Merriam-Webster, had been named for a dolphin under the sea. All this time, I had been holding my head up, feeling superior to Ellis, Willie, Robert, James, James, the Michaels, Anthony and, Anthony and Anthony, because they were stupid boys. My knuckles still smarted from socking Ellis Carter in the jaw while he had been telling the truth. I had been named for a dolphin, a big fishy mammal with a wide grin. Learning the full truth about my name had been more than I could bear. The librarian got up from her desk and put a Kleenex in my hand. I hadn't even known that I'd been making a grand Negro spectacle of myself, bawling over a word in the dictionary. The following week when Flipper came on, I'd gotten up and turned the television off. Vanetta and Fern bleated like billy goats, but I had done what I always did and distracted them. I'd said, tonight is game and cookie night. I brought out the Candyland game poured the milk, piled a nice stack of Oreos on their plate. I hadn't cared if I never saw that grinning mammal again.